Okay. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Good day. Good day. Hi. Welcome to, to the movie, movie girls. girls. Here for a new episode of the movie girls uh this is tiffany's choice would you like to tell us about the movie no. oh. <laughs> i will it's gonna uh, be no. a secret no i'll tell you i'll tell you about it but we'll do that one time maybe like april fools next year or something we'll do a april movie fools. and we won't say what the movie is you have to guess we'll based make a on cocktail our context and then by what we're talking about and see if you can figure it out but then I'm sure we'll be very famous for how amazing our podcast is. And we'll have so many followers. We can do our first giveaway. Whoever guesses the movie first uh, gets something. Uh, video, VHS. VHS. Cassette tape. Cassette tape of video um, cassette. whatever we found at the thrift store. What does the H stand for in VHS? Home. <gasps> Wait. Video home s- system. system. Is it? Actually? I don't oh. <laughs> I make that shit up. Acting. Video. <laughs> I'm exceptional at my craft. <laughs> I can fool Tiffany like it's nobody's business. I'm very gullible. That's not a, that's no feat to Excuse fool you. me. Are you saying I'm not talented? How dare you? No, I was putting myself down. Yep. Oh, well, you're rude. <clears throat> Just let me, um. Google Wig- VHS. <sighs> hey, uh, please stand by while we look up things that are not fucking important. I've Googled it and I still don't know what don't it means. Don't know. Really? Did you Google what does VHS stand for? No. Or did you just Google VHS? I just Googled VHS. You have to say what does VHS, VHS stand for? meaning stands for. Oh, for God's sake. This is, I hope this is. You're right, video home system. I am smart. I hope this is as painful as for all of you as it is for I me. I found it fascinating. I think we all learned something today. Did we? I did. I'm glad. You didn't know. I did. That was a I a lucky guess. Right. I have a lucky Yes. Speaking uh, of lucky, educate. we are watching today the Joy Luck Club. Excellent segue, Tiffany. Thank you. Why did you choose this movie? Because I was feeling lucky, punk, and <sighs> also joyous and wanting to be in a club. No, I, 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 I <laughs> chose this movie because this is the worst intro we've ever done. I'm very proud. Excuse of you. This intro is amazing. I'm sorry. I saw this movie <laughs> in grade 10, 11, or twelve. Uh, I had a, a, I had a great social studies teacher. His name was Mr. Mung, and we watched this movie. And I don't know if it had anything to do with anything, but I think he probably just wanted to educate his classroom of like dumb white kids. Yeah, <laughs> show us some like Asian masterpiece cinema. Yeah, you know, like the second Asian cast Hollywood film, and the by the way, like the third being Crazy Rich Asians like 25 years later. So just yeah. let that sink in for a minute. Are you kidding me? I'm going to tell you a little bit about this film. This is uh, a long one. So it's a film based on the 1989 novel by Amy Tran. Nope, Amy Tan. Yep. I wrote Tran, but I'm pretty sure it's Tan. It's Tan. Great. Good job, Tiff. My power went out like while I was doing this. So I was like, <laughs> I had my phone light on and I was trying to like read, what well, you know, read Wikipedia and write down in my book and there's no power and I eventually just gave up. So sorry if there's any... Dumb mistakes. It's fine. It's the power company's fault. Damn you, BC Hydro. <laughs> uh, so, film based on the novel by Amy Tan. Four older women, all Chinese immigrants, living in San Francisco. As you see by this beautiful screen cap of the San Francisco Gold, what it, Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I like to just let you talk and figure it out on your own. It's fun. I'm struggling. Four <laughs> older women, all Chinese immigrants, living in San Francisco, meet regularly to play Mahjong. Ma- Mahjong? Mahjong. Mahjong? Eat and tell stories. Each of these women has an adult Chinese American daughter. The film reveals the hidden pasts of the older women and their daughters and how their lives are shaped by the clash of Chinese and American cultures as they strike. Nope. That's what I wrote. Oh. Strive. Strive. Great. To understand each other. Guys, the power was out. Their no family bonds and each other. Uh, so it was directed by Wayne Wang, starring, help me when I get this wrong, Tsai Chin, mm-hmm. Q I think Chin. So. Yeah. Great. Uh, Lisa Liu, France Wynn, uh, Rosalind Chow, mm-hmm. Lauren Tom, Tamlin Tamita, and Ming Na Wen. Yeah. I love Ming Na Wen. She's the only one that I know because oh. she's an ER. And she's beautiful. Oh, yeah, she's, she's ER. fantastic. That's right. She's so good. Yeah. I really like her. I have a delightful anecdote, maybe for later, about oh, okay. her. okay. Well, uh, about me and how my friends thought I was a horrible, horrible racist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Spoiler, I'm not. 
No, they were mistaken. <laughs> All <was> right. <laughs> um, Amy Tan actually also co-produced and co-wrote the screenplay, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, it had a budget of ten point five million and made thirty three million at the box office. Yeah. Cool. We'll talk about She's everything else after, but that's the general synopsis. And Teal, what are we drinking? It's so <gasps> fragrant. Okay. So. I was starting with the cocktail. Uh, a little tough because I have not seen the movie, so I don't know anything about it. Um, but I know it's about um, uh, Chinese culture and Chinese immigrants. And so I wanted to, to f- just to find somewhere to start off. So I was like, I don't know how to pick something that's appropriate and not a weird thing that's ignorant. Um, so I looked up the 10 or like the most popular or known for fruits that are grown in China. Um, there's quite a few really good ones, like mango and pineapple are on there, and durian, um, which I just can't, because durian smell, it's like, ugh, it's gross to me. I want to like it, but it's, onion is one of the flavors. It's delicious hate, to some. It is delicious to some, and I, but I hate onions in general, and then to have a thing smell slash almost tastes like onions is hard for me. So no judgments to durian. I really so wanted sorry. to buy a durian today, because I've never had one, and we no. found one at TNT, but... It was frozen. It just seemed like a lot of work to really like walking. carry it home. It was really heavy. I didn't. I didn't know they were that big. I in my head they were like the size of maybe a cantaloupe is oh. what I had imagined, uh, and they're like as big as your head. Yes, they're quite large. Um, so the fruit that I chose to go with was lychee. Mm. So I really like lychee. Who doesn't they're love lychee? So good. Um, so I made a lychee martini. So it has an ounce of vodka, an ounce of lychee liqueur, which I've honestly always wanted. I forgot that I always wanted to buy this liqueur because it just sounds delightful. Uh, An ounce of lychee juice, uh, fresh lychees. Well, actually, these are canned lychees. We have fresh ones, too, to nibble on later. Uh, And a little bit of lime juice just to offset the sweetness. So I'm really excited. It's like a beautiful... It smells really It's like a cloudy white martini, and it's... Lychee is such a great smell because it's kind of florally Mm, and kind of um, fruity and very... It's super fragrant, and Mm -hmm. it's just... It's so good. Yeah, it's like very different, and it's not very... It's not super flashy, which I like, but it's um, it's nice. It's a nice white cocktail. Cheers to... Joy and luck and clubs. Yes, indeed. Clink. Ooh. Oh, that's really tasty. I like it. I was expecting it to be a lot sweeter, so I was kind of like, oh boy, but it's mm. actually a great balance of sweet yeah. and... The vodka in there definitely else. sets it off a little, gives it that alcoholic burn. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a punch to it. I really Ooh. like it. But the lychee is so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be tasty. Ooh. Thank you. I love it. I'm excited. We're going to have so much fun with that liqueur. Yeah, that thing is cool. I've always wanted to try that. Yeah. I didn't, didn't know what to do with it or it's what to do with it. It's such an overpowering. I wonder how it would taste kind of. I wonder if there's like a way to mute it with other flavors, mm-hmm. how that would be. But it might be. Because nice this is obviously very it. lychee focused. It's well, just, yeah, it's just all, lychee. There's like three bits of lychee in there. Yeah. Um, and nothing else. Um, but yeah, I might be need to put it in, like, in some sort of like Mai Tai tropical fruit <sighs> thing, but it substitute whatever li- li- liquor in there instead of like rum, do lychee. Yeah. The lychee liqueur just to get that florally sweetness in let's there. Let's do that this summer. Yeah, let's mess around. It's going to be a great patio drink. Yeah. Mm, I really, really like this. Me actually. too. It feels all like tingly and warm. Mm. <laughs> going down my throat. I love it. All right, let's uh, start the Okay, movie. we're going to watch the movie and we'll see you guys all later. Mm, toodles. Toodaloo. <laughs> uh, we're back. We're back. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Sorry I pick all the heavy duty movies. It's good. Did though. you like it? Yeah. Yeah, I done did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is heavy though, hey. Yeah, I mean it's no color purple. <laughs> Shit, I don't think anyone's gonna. That's true. Beat that no, that's a heavyweight champion right there. That's true. But yeah, I really, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. it was a, what a beautifully done movie so with good. such an amazing so cast. Good. And 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 you would think that that would break down barriers for other films starring all Asian casts, oh. right? Uh, that didn't happen. No, sure didn't. Never does. <laughs> Do we learn nothing from Thelma and Louise? Yeah. No. Um, but I love yeah. all of all of the facets to it. The relationships between the mothers and mm-hmm. the daughters and the friends with each other, both young and older, mm-hmm. and um, if children with their immigrant parents. You yeah. Know what I mean? Because we see our parents and we see kind of like one dimension of them, but mm-hmm. imagine like being children of immigrant parents. I can only yeah. I can only hypothesize. Like everything that we say, we. We don't know. We can only yeah. hypothesize based on this film and discussions we, like that. But we are from here. We're yeah, and 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 there's yeah. this whole other side to your parents' life that you can't even really identify with. You know, if you're born American and your parent mm-hmm. is from somewhere else, you know, 
they they might be a certain way and you might never understand why they are that way. Yeah. Because you weren't raised the same place that they were raised necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know what And I mean? they're trying to raise them in this new world without losing where they came from. You want to instill that the same values. Of both of those things. Yeah, and it's a balance. How do you, like the child will never, well, could, but likely you can't properly appreciate what they what they've been through and what they where they really came from right because you don't you don't know you don't know and as a child i would imagine you experience so many emotions maybe embarrassment if your parents you know can't speak the language um mm-hmm. like a lot of times kids yeah. will sometimes translate for their parents mm-hmm. right because they'll know more english because they've gone to school and this is kind of all they it's know also so much easier for children to pick up things yeah. they're still learning, their brains are still developing so yeah easier for children to learn languages absolutely multiple languages and and they're also out there saying it or speaking it and yeah i, I can't imagine i can't imagine you, all you of the things that it. you yeah. would experience as a child of immigrant parents um it's it's got to be tough as hell yeah and also just the the pressure to to do something with their lives because what for so many immigrant families what did their parents go through to get themselves and their family there right because you're not going to come here if you don't want a better life. You know what I mean? You're not going there to get a worse life. Yeah, it's you're so much where pressure you are for a child. to get something more than what you currently have. Right. So you want your child to be happy and be successful and have a All the better you life. <laughs> and otherwise they wouldn't have left and taken that jump. Yeah, your parents want to give you opportunities and... Uh... Yeah, and the pressure to live up to that. And not that that's saying that every single parent is like that. Right. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's so many things that we as, I mean, I'm a, th- oh gosh, we're a third generation Canadian. Yeah. Same here. Like how would, how would, how would we know that? We like, would, no, there's no. Can't identify, which is yeah. why movies like this are so important. Yeah. Both, you know, for us on a smaller scale to just witness this experience, but also for people that identify with this experience yeah. and have gone through a similar experience. You, you have to see your own life reflected back at you on the screen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We have to have more of this. Yeah, and again, that's what stories are for. That's what movies are for, is to tell stories so that we can understand another aspect of life and learn something from it, grow from it, understand something different, see someone else's perspective or way of life, and to not be ignorant shit. Mm-hmm. Is that the goal? Yep. Don't be an ignorant shit. Don't be a shit. In general. Yeah. But especially don't especially, be an ignorant one. Especially not an ignorant show. That's the worst kind. <laughs> That's the worst kind. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear something sad? No. <laughs> it's not that sad. Well, okay. it's, it's pretty sad. Uh, the director was almost reluctant to make another film, the director being Wayne Wayne Wang, mm-hmm. um, about Chinese Americans because his prior films had not attracted a wider audience. Oh. Um, he said there were no known Hollywood movies with an all Asian cast at that time. I think, like, previous, from what I read, the previous. Or the prior Hollywood movie with an all-Asian cast was, like, 1961. Oh, shit, this is 93? This is 93. And oh. then, since then, the next, again, Hollywood um, movie with all-Asian cast was in 2018 for Crazy Rich Asians. Um, and it says, um, it was considered risky to make a film with a Chinese protagonist because Asian actors were unknown to American audiences. I mean, that's that's... That's the excuse, which is uh, such bullshit. Why do we need to have someone that we know? Everyone's unknown until we know them. That's right. Fuck. That's how we make friends. But it has to be a friendly (laughs) white face, right? Or like, God forbid. (sighs) There's just, there's so much racist stereotype bullshit that fucking white spew. And just before this too. So in the movie was, um, shit, what's that guy's name that we were talking about that was in, um... Oh, the 16 Candles Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink Boy. Andrew but do you remember, something? was it 16 Candles and all of those, um, what's the name of the director of those movies? Um, John Hughes. Thank you, John Hughes, where he had characters like Ducky, who yeah. was just incredibly f- uh, uh, it's such a... <laughs> Racist character. No, Long Duck Dong was oh. his name. Was the character's name? Who is Duck? Oh Ducky no, Ducky was John Cryer. Friend. Sorry, you're absolutely yeah. right. But well, like, was that was that Sixteen Candles or is that Pretty in Pink? I haven't seen these movies in a really, really, really long. I think it's Pretty in Pink. The I think it's pretty student, pretty. right? Yeah, and it's just like, come on, and um, so I'm just saying it wasn't this... it wasn't that long before this movie was shot, no. and obviously since then that 
But that's but they're Hollywood that's safe. Films, that's that's okay. That's not considered a risk to have in Hollywood films. You know what I mean? Like the double standard of it all racism? is yeah, is that's not risky. Painful. Like, well, that's the big thing with like Mickey Rooney and um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's, dear God. God, watching that again, I'm like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Like, first of all, just get an Asian to play an Asian, but also, what the fuck was that character? Oh you didn't have to be that. It didn't have to be this slapstick piece of fucking shit. That's incredibly insulting. <laughs> like the comedy thing that they're going for, it's like, did you have to make it? A, cultures aren't gags. Yeah. They're not a, it's not a joke. Not a, it's not yeah, a punchline. Exactly. That was a, thank you. The punchline is what I was looking for. That's not what they what they are. Like that's uh, it's just fucking shameful. And you we yeah, we still see that in mm-hmm. you know, watching movies from ten years ago and five years ago that just don't live up. You know, and they still say some shit that's just fucked and it's just stop. It's not funny. I don't know. It, it's 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 upsetting. It's bothersome. And again, the things we can do for that is to not support movies that do shit like that. To not allow those conversations to happen around us. To not laugh at those jokes. To say to when people that make those jokes, you know, that's not funny. And it's yeah, that's also not, okay. not appropriate. Yeah. And to stand up and say things. Because that's just fucking stupid. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. I think I tangented at that one. It's okay. It's call me tangent deal. <laughs> Uh, Gene Siskel singled out the script and performance, praising the script and performances. That's redundant. And the film for presenting images of Asian Americans outside um, of the narrow image of childhood violinists and spelling bee winners, opting that its main accomplishments were the depiction of how the brutality of the lives of the women in China could continue to influence the lines of their American daughters. Yeah. Right? Because the daughters were so affected by... Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, I don't think, really knew exactly what their mothers went through. How could you? And the mothers not. didn't really want to talk about these painful times in their mm-hmm. lives. It's such a sensitive thing. So the yeah. daughters are kind of learning why their mothers are the way they are later on in life and yeah. kind of be able to come to an understanding and maybe even identify with their mothers a little bit through their own experiences. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we are with all of our parents. We're, they are, we are all our experiences and our parents course want to shield us from any sort of horrors that they've lived through Mm -hmm. but you're still who you are because of what you've lived through so we we already feel that and get that and react to that and grow with that and and then to also add on moving to another country where you do not speak the language or know the culture or have family or anything you just up and go somewhere else on top of your childhood and like previous life issues and traumas like fuck (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot. That's, That's a, a heavy lot load to bear. To take. Yeah. And then to actually, and then to raise a child on that, like, that's, like, fucking kudos, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing is, there was criticism of the way that Chinese men were portrayed in the film. Uh, they're very domineering or, like, misogynistic um, or, like, clueless and aloof. And I will mm. say the one thing that I have to say, which, I mean, that's fair enough because they were portraying this, like, feudal old world China where men were the law, right? And women yeah. were kind of viewed as property in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I understand that part. I think what I take issue with was all of the American men were kind of like, except for, you know, the one guy, like the white American men were like perfect, understanding, loving husbands. And I mean, American yeah, men a little bit can be shit too. Yeah, they can be just as, there are more either. Yeah, because I mean, there's the one guy, I forget his name, but the um, kind of bald controlling guy that split all the groceries right down the middle, even yeah. though he made seven and a half times as much. Yeah. He was kind of a doofus, but he yeah. wasn't like as awful as some of the Chinese men had been portrayed. Yeah. Like American men can be, could have been just as awful or, or, in some ways. Yeah. And it, it it's men in general. Like, like I said, patriarchy It did knows feel a little no bit... Un- yeah. It, well, that's exactly it. And it felt a little bit unbalanced. You know, yeah. the patriarchy still exists in America and it still exists in 1993 as much as it did in China in 1960-whatever, yeah. whenever that was... You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that was my only thing. Mm-hmm. They both stayed with the white men. It's fine. It's just, you know, a little bit unbalanced, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it was... A little bit too happy, perfect endings for all of the daughters. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, and, and like they yeah, end up with the perfect. You don't want. Man. Anyway, yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Okay. I have nothing to add, but repeating in different words. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, concur, concur. I almost wish, I wish this, I would wish this was a series, right? Like an eight-part mini series or something. 
Like, I wanted to... I wanted remake. more. Okay, of all the movies we watch, there's always a remake, right? In the yeah. works. This is one that would be great. And I, I didn't, I didn't read anything. So I mean, maybe. Who it knows, was like right? an eight or nine part series where each episode is one of the four of the eight women's stories. Yeah. And then the last one is... I actually, in my research, I did come across something that said that there was a 2018 remake, but it was clearly a a joke article where it was like all these white women and it's like, they're remaking the Joy Luck Club. And it was like Patricia, Patricia Arquette and um, uh, Tilda Swinton. And I think it was just like a a photo of these actresses that happened to be together in a shoot. And they, it was kind of like a jokey tongue in cheek type of article. And for a second I was like, "Ah!" and then I'm like, oh no, this, this This clearly isn't real. Okay, thank God. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Um, in the 1990s, after the success of this movie, Disney Studios had contacted Amy Tan. By the way, like, yeah, I think this movie was made by Disney Studios. Oh. They're the, one of the few to, like, pick it up oh, for sure. a movie. Cool. Um, but Disney Studios contacted Amy Tan to discuss making her second novel into a film, but negotiations fell through. And after that, Asian American stories were mostly shot down by studios. It's like this this small window of opportunity okay, just seemed to it, close, and then right? That's it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, like, even Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> They had to fight and fight. Oh, that movie never would have done well it had if the cast hadn't been so self aware that this movie Mm -hmm. would never take off if they didn't promote the shit out of it. And they absolutely did that. They've worked harder than I've ever seen any cast work in recent years to promote a movie. Yeah. And because I know um, they pushed to have it in theaters because Netflix wanted to buy it out and just put it as a Netflix thing. And they knew they had to put it in theaters in order to get it seen. And to make an impact and show that Asian casts and Asian stories are meant to be heard and worthy of being heard and should be heard and seen. And I just, I, all the kudos and props to them for pushing that. That's why we made, I made you know, we wanted to make sure we saw that in theaters. Yeah. So that it, our, you know, our box office money went to them. It's one, it was just us, but... You have to go and see those movies to support them, uh, preferably on opening weekend, so that their numbers are there, so we can show people that yes, we want to see these stories, like mm-hmm. make more of these. But even like this movie did really well for its time, mm-hmm. and and whatever came of that, right? So it's definitely disheartening. Yeah. Even with all of this work that people put into making and creating and putting these movies out there. But that being said, too, like let's also maybe seek out movies that aren't done by Hollywood. It doesn't have to be a Hollywood yes. version of a movie. And I will say like. If a movie isn't put, like, in my face, if it's not on Netflix, if it's not on Crave, if I don't see it in previews, I won't go out of my way to see it. Yeah. So that's definitely something that we can do. Yeah. And try harder at is seek out movies um, that tell these stories that are really important for us mm-hmm. to watch. Because it's safe and easy for us to go to movies. Yeah. About people that are like us because we have to, we can relate without even thinking about it. Right. That's, yeah. It doesn't that's make so us think. Whereas movies like these... Like, the stories we can understand, but the experiences and the perspective are very different for us. Yeah. And it makes us challenge our way of thinking and challenge our worldview, and that's great. That's Yeah, just because you can't identify with it doesn't mean you shouldn't see it. And yeah. we will never understand it. We will never fully grasp it, but we need to witness it. Yeah, but again, it's just broaden your perspectives. No yeah, not everything has to be yesterday. for you. Yeah. In fact... Nothing is for you. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Who do you think you are? <laughs> yeah. Who are we? We don't that... know you. <laughs> yeah. Um, even today, only 5% of screen time goes to Asians in Hollywood. Uh, and 1 in 20 Americans are of Asian descent. Yeah. Um, but they're often relegated to Hollywood roles that strip them of their American identity and creates these one-dimensional characters. Yeah. Because it always has to be either... It's playing up all the stereotypes and all the culture and all of those things to make it very clear this is an Asian character. Yeah. Asian accent, Asian clothing, Asian co- whatever you can. Or it's taken it entirely away. And it's like, no, 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 they're just regular Americans. No, no, no. You like, can't uh, hint to it. I don't know. People are a sum of their parts, not, I don't know. Um, I just wrote the story's relatable and it's a depiction of mother-daughter relationships as well as the sacrifice immigrant parents make so their children can thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you feel about the relationships between the mothers and daughters? Did you relate to anything or was there anyone that stood out to you? Yeah, it, it was really interesting what, like listening and seeing all of their stories. Because of course you're going to see in every relationship, you're going to see a little bit of your own relationship with your mother in them. Um, yeah, I mean it's hard because Moms listen to these things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I, uh, 
I, I don't, I don't know how favorite. to say the things. Oh, you can think about it. Okay. I'll tell you my favorite. My favorite yes. was the mother that was telling the daughter, like, know your worth. Yeah. I think that was my favorite that story. It was lovely. It was lovely because sure mm-hmm. enough, like the mother, mothers know. Mothers yeah. know about their daughters. And it's she okay. she immediately knew she walked in and to her daughter's home and she just sensed like, your husband is not treating you how he should be treating you. Yeah. And he was taking advantage of his wife and not appreciating her. And she was, all of the wives were doing so much for their husbands. Yeah. <laughs> and the mother had gone through her own experiences with her mother that she was never treated what she was worth. And her mother definitely wasn't. So mm-hmm. she was like, I'm going to impart this onto my daughter. If nothing else, know your worth. Yeah. That's, I think that's a big thing too, is knowing your worth. And, but also having your own mom know their worth too. Like you have Ame, to who had that with her daughter, but she, she knew her mother didn't know her worth. And I find that too. I, I think, sorry, mom, I love you so much. And I um, don't want to embarrass you. But um, I think my mom doesn't know her worth. I'm positive that she doesn't. Of how my mom is smart and funny and so caring and thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Um, and she doesn't, she doesn't know it. It's very weird. When I was a kid, my mom was like... The most confident, badass fucking bitch out there. I always thought she was just, like, crushing it. I thought she was amazing. I still don't mean I don't think of that anymore. Um, I always thought she was this strong, fierce woman. Uh, and as I got older, I saw her insecurities and her self-consciousness, which I never saw as a kid. It was very weird. It was, a, I don't even know, it was almost like an instant thing. I was like... But I think that's just what it is to be a kid is to have sort of a veil over your eyes and to view your parents a certain way. And then all of a sudden the veil's kind of lifted as you become an adult. And and you see them for who they are. You see the cracks and that's okay. Like they... They're humans. They're human and that's allowed. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was always, I'm like, oh, I wish you could see you how I see you. Yeah. Like, because I see you as this fucking badass bitch. For sure. But I mean, to be a mom is to put your life on hold for a... A long amount of time while you raise your kids right and then your kids kind of move out and you're like oh it's just me again I need to work yeah. on myself so I mean it's mm-hmm. kind of like you're on pause for a little bit and I mean the thing about you and me is we will never experience that no. necessarily because we don't have to put our lives on hold for any children we're just kind of able to discover who we are mm-hmm. and in an unfiltered way I don't know yeah well it's quite the sacrifice you make to be a mother, yeah, that that whole thing of putting yourself on hold and putting your development and your personality and your life on hold, whether you wanted that or didn't or chose that or didn't or whatever, because not every mom is sacrificing it. It, it is, and in, in a way, and lots of women are happy to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still is a sense of your all of your energy is put into this person that you're you've grown and created and are now raising. Yeah. And then, yeah, then what it's like when we all just up and fuck off and <laughs> bye, I'm moving out now, goodbye. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I <laughs> just left behind. Like, I know I didn't, I don't think I moved out very well or very conscious, conscientiously. I'm <laughs> like looking back on it. I mean, it was very abrupt. Did your mom want you to stay? I'm sure she probably did. I think she never said one way or the other, like she wanted me or she was, was happy she with me there to at do that things. point? Oh, yeah. Okay, She's good. been there since okay. I was like, I don't know, six or seven. Right, or young. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Bears around forever. Yeah. Um, bears are my stepdad. Um, we call him Bear because that's what we call him. <laughs> um, I can't call him Dad, but I can't call him by his real name. That'd be weird. So he has his own name. It's Bear. <laughs> <laughs> he has Bear Day and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I'm like looking back, I was like, I think I kind of just like up and went. <laughs> like, it was very sudden. It's just like one day you're like, yeah. Oh, bye. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really remember it entirely, but I'm like, I have a feeling I just kind of fucked off. It was a little round, but I think it was kind of almost unceremonious. <laughs> it was just like, hey. <laughs> it was just very weird. Um, but then they moved away, like, a year later, six months later. And I was like, all right, <laughs> see you later. It was very bizarre. Um, but anyway, I'm not sure where I was going with that. But the moving out. Oh, yes. So you move out. And I was like, bye, I'm see you later. And it's like, oh, you're now just the two of you. So what does that mean? What does that mean yeah, to well, be some parents a parent are when you're not just kids them around? too, right? Like, yeah. Single parents or whatever, and yeah, like what is yeah what is that when your kid's gone doesn't live there anymore, and taking up all of your time, what does that mean for you? Mm-hmm. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah, 
And then parents like mine who got divorced and they both, it was actually really interesting and probably a good thing for me to watch them discover who they were on their own, Mm -hmm. especially my mom putting herself through night classes and working all day and learning so many things and just becoming this amazing woman. Like, (laughs) (laughs) I think that was important for me to see 100%. Yeah, moms are amazing. Well, and I, I was so young when my parents divorced mm-hmm. um, that I didn't see all of that. Like, I know my mom worked three jobs and so did Bear, and they worked all the fucking time. And I know now that they went out without food days because they wasn't enough for all of us. So they made sure me and my brother had. I never saw that. And I, I always had a lunch. Mm-hmm. You know, I always had lunch. I always had meals. And our home was always clean. Didn't have a lot, but it was always clean. I always had clothes. And... I never went without. We were pretty poor, but I didn't really know it. We never went without because my mom fucking worked her ass off to make sure that was the case and to get themselves there that she's fought and worked for years, for years and years. And yeah, I just, um, I didn't see it because how could you? I was five. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You don't know. I, I don't fucking your, your know. Your world is you when I, you're young, you know, I, right? Yeah, you, you don't know because of course it is. How would you understand? You don't understand those kinds of things when you're five. <laughs> so I learned about it well after the fact and slowly over time and by asking questions, and which I don't think helped me be a conscientious, thoughtful person because I didn't, you know, as a teenager and stuff because I just didn't, I didn't know it. You don't know. Yeah, and maybe that that's another actually interesting difference that you just pointed out is that we didn't know and we were very self-involved maybe to an mm-hmm. extent but watching this movie the very young daughters of these women were kind of very aware of their parents uh, expectations of them i feel like yeah. right that's kind of another difference that maybe mm-hmm. these kids experience that we never had to yeah right yeah it's interesting to think about it really is um Ooh, kind of an unrelated thing that I noticed. So you saw how they're all wearing jade jewelry, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I decided to give them a goog. Give and a goog. I read that Chinese parents often give their sons or daughters jade bracelets to remind them of parents' protection and love. Jade is regarded as a symbol of the beautiful and precious, embodying the virtues of Confucius, courage, compassion, modesty, wisdom, and justice. Oh, that was kind of nice. That is nice. Yeah. Well, thank and you like when she, when she left her twin daughters by the tree and she put, put down like, the jade bracelets. Yeah. I mean, obviously all the jewelry, but the jade bracelets as mm-hmm. well is yeah. Maybe a symbol of protection for yeah. her daughters because she wasn't able to give that yeah. to them. And just like, you know, she wasn't there to maybe they would see that. Hopefully if whoever found them kept everything. Yeah, gave it to them, gave it they to them. would see, oh, my mother left me this. This means like she didn't do this to, out of cruelty. Mm-hmm. You know, because how would they know what were their lives like growing up? They don't know what her mom, their mom went through. They just were found. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you, don't, you don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Um had a thought and I lost it. Oh, sorry. Shit. Sorry. And okay. Mm, did you like it? I did. I liked it very much. It was really good. Did it hurt your heart? It did hurt my heart. I had a hearted heart and sat in there and nice things and good things. And like I said, I wish this was a... It's, it's a beautiful movie. It really is. Like, I wish there was more. I want more of that. I, like, a, like a miniseries. Yeah, a miniseries would be really good. I think it'd be really good. Not some whole like drawn out several seasons thing because it was ruined everything. Yeah, yeah. But just, like just a, a mini series, a set mini of series. each of their stories. I would love to have seen that. It was I wanted more of that. It was really good. Yeah. Um, who would you recommend it to? Moms and daughters for sure. Yeah. Obviously. Bobby. Um, anyone that wants to learn more about a different culture. Yeah, maybe yeah. a bit of an immigrant experience and yeah. maybe have a little bit of compassion for immigrants and what they've gone to to seek out a better lives for themselves and their families. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all of America, basically. Yeah, Great. all of America. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and what mood should you be in to watch it? Oh, God. What is coming to mind for mood for this? And by mood, we mean paint a picture. Yeah, of, of the course. Day. Yeah, it's, for some reason, it's a rainy day. Oh, good um, it's an afternoon Gentle again. Rain. Definitely an afternoon again. Yeah. I think. Well, usually afternoons. Sometimes they're nighttime movies. But I think a rainy afternoon, maybe if you've got sads in there. You know, sometimes if you've got sads in there, and you kind of just need to, like, get them out, so you got to watch a sad movie so you can get all your cries out. Right. So maybe in a sads mood. Um, yeah. In the rain or an afternoon where you can snuggle up and be, like, you know, sad. Uh, maybe you just, like, miss your mom. Oh. I don't want to think about your mom's grief. 
Okay. And maybe if you're feeling like upset over some, you know, relatively insignificant thing yeah. and you watch something like this and you're like, okay, what I'm feeling is actually not, <laughs> not that big of a yeah. deal and life is pretty damn good. So maybe I'll just appreciate what I've got going on. Yeah. So and maybe just give um, your mom a call. Yeah. Maybe when you need a little bit of, a little bit of perspective, yeah. you know, on your petty nonsense. That's me most of the time. Uh, yeah. How, and, uh, would, uh, how would you, nope. How would you rate this movie? I would rate this. This is a tough one because I don't want to be a turd face. No, well, no. Okay, we don't. It's the, we don't actually rate the movies. The ratings. I'm mean gonna nothing. say four great daughters out of four loving moms. Huh. Four out of four. <laughs> thanks for watching with me. Yeah, things are picking this. This is so good. So good. Excellent choice. Thank you. Like it. <laughs> thanks for the. Um, cocktail too that was mm. <laughs> it was real good it was real it was good really, teal was shooting me dirty looks throughout the movie because i hadn't finished it because apparently it. you're supposed to guzzle your cocktail shit. like a heathen get it in your face right it was now. a sipping cocktail it's not a sipping cocktail it was cocktail absolutely a sipping cocktail it was birdie and it was very fragrant and it was so nice to just like <laughs> smell and sip but uh Sorry, she glared at me and i did because it was like way over it. halfway through and she had like way over half her martini left oh, and i had already finished mine so also I ate um lychee just like fruit on its own for the first time. Oh my god. I did no, not no, no. know. Do you know want to know how she describes the taste of lychee? How did I describe it? I don't even remember. Oh really? No. Nope. I remember. What I say? Hmm. This tastes like if oh. <laughs> This tastes like if broccoli were a fruit. It tastes like fruit broccoli. <laughs> No, but didn't it though? No. When I said that, did you think it and real? No. It absolutely tastes like fruit broccoli. Joel, <laughs> no. go get one right now and taste it. Tell me it tastes like broccoli, There's but it's broccoli. on the right counter. Here. Go see if it tastes like. In fruit like the best broccoli. possible way, I love broccoli. Who I love broccoli wanna... too, but I would not say that that tastes like fruit broccoli. All right, well, whatever. I didn't know that, that it was can. I yep. didn't know. Oh, yep. I have a fresh one. I don't know what the canned one tastes like. No, you have to be a, has to be a fresh one. Can I didn't know they were as like it. drippy and spray as they were. Just like broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> They're the thing on the counter that look like red little stones. Joel, have you ever had durian before? Durian? <laughs> durian Duran? That's Darian Durant. He's from the Rough Riders. He wants so oh. like, one always. Yeah, that over. one. Yes. But be careful when you peel it because it's squirty. I need it. You peel it. it. But be careful because it's squirty. Oh, this hurts my brain. This All is the people it. need to know. And I think Joel, if anyone will understand, this is probably the worst ending to a podcast I think we could ever do. The podcast you peel it lives. and then pretend it's a grape you have to peel, but there's a big old seed inside. Oh. oh. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the seed either. You didn't prep me for that. Oh, I did. I, I did tell you. Was it a seed or was it a pit? Both. It, it's a big old. I don't seed remember pit. you telling me. I I'm not did. very observant. I was telling you when we were eating the dried one. I don't one. listen we to had you. The dried le- See. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It tastes like fruit broccoli, Joel. What's the verdict? It tastes like broccoli fruit. Come tell them. Fuck you two. Thanks, Joel. You could like steam it and put some cheese on it. Man, Joel's the best. Give it to your kid and they turn their nose up at it. Yeah. I like broccoli. Tastes like like it's like fruit. It's fruit. It's fruit broccoli. Anyways, goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'm going to go punch myself. Or is broccoli a lychee vegetable? Oh. Mine. (laughs) Bone. This has been the worst five minutes of my life. Um, please, someone put me out of my misery. Thanks, Joel. Goodbye. <sighs> Thus Say ends goodbye. another excellent episode of The Movie Girls. We like broccoli, but it's like... Bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>